Hello everybody and welcome back to the channel. A little bit more of a intriguing video for you guys today. Um, for the past few months I've seen a lot of information and footage regarding close air support spam in War Thunder. Um, people spawn in a light vehicle, they drive to the nearest cap zone, they either J out or die and then respawn in an aircraft with ordnance on board and use it to strafe out half the enemy team in their spawn keep building up spawn points and win the match. This has become a bit of a concern for a lot of people, so in this video I'm going to show you how to defeat the close air support spam. I didn't set out with the intention of doing this video, much less doing it in this vehicle, which I know I've covered quite recently, so forgive me for that. But So in this game I spawned in in my T-34-100, got knocked out, spawned in in an aircraft, got shot down, and I thought sod it, I'll spawn in the SPAA. I should explain to begin with, I am the world's worst SPAA driver. I can't aim for shit. Although, sometimes <laughs> I get lucky. The point of this video is not to demonstrate my marksmanship with an SPAA, that's far from the point. As I just said, I can't aim for jack shit. The point I'm trying to prove is that SPAA still has value in War Thunder. It's the perfect way to defeat um, this close air support spam, as you would imagine, it's what it's designed for. Even if you don't manage to shoot down the enemy vehicles, you're still able to cause a hell of a lot of damage and stop them from... <sighs> you can scare them off then, let's put it that way. You don't have to hit them to get them to stop strafing you. I mean, it would be great and it's going to help but that's not necessarily your main objective. Enough, air s enough flak in an area will deter an aircraft from getting anywhere near it. Especially if the pilot's intelligent and realises that the SPAA gunner is a decent shot. Although this works both ways. If they realise the SPAA gunner is not a particularly good shot, then that may not bother them too much. That, by the way, is an ME-262. That was an ME-262. <laughs> yeah, I just shot down a jet in an SPAA. Not the best jet in the world, granted, but it's moving a hell of a lot faster than the first aircraft was. So you can see what I'm saying. Ne neither of the two vehicles I've just shot down were necessarily close air support vehicles in nature. They're not assault uh, aircraft or attacker aircraft, but they play a good part in covering the close air support players on their team. That's what the fighters are for. Covering the bombers and covering the attackers. And shooting down other attackers, fighters, what have you. Basically, keeping the enemy at bay from getting any decent aircraft up. Nevertheless, two is not a bad score for me. It's very rare that I get any air kills. So this is quite the feat. Okay, so the close air support has been suggested to be the best way to play War Thunder, as in the easiest way to grind XP, although there is an issue with this. Gaining XP involves gaining XP in a certain vehicle relevant to what you want to grind. So if you want to grind air experience points, then you're going to have to fly an aircraft. If you want to grind ground, you're going to have to grind ground. That goes without saying, but it goes further than that. If you want to grind XP for let's say a medium tank, it's probably best to use the tank previous, b before it, in the medium tank line, because that gives you a bonus. If you have any premiums, that also helps as well. So close, close air support is not the greatest way of grinding experience in ground forces for ground forces vehicles, because you're flying an aircraft the majority of the time. But what it does allow you to do is give you enough spawn points to keep spawning into the match and keep prolonging the match to an extent that your ground vehicles become become more of a feasible um, option throughout the game. While we've got a bit of a brief period here of calm, I just want to say, you know, if any of you have any suggestions on the close air support spam, do you think it's an issue? Do you think it isn't? Do you think there's a better way of defeating it than the SPAA? Let me know in the comments. I'm interested to see what you have to say. So, is our next target. This is an incredibly long range in comparison to the last two. But, 
I figure I'll take some speculative shots anyway. If nothing else, it'll distract him while the F8F tries to get a decent shot. Keep it up and victory will be ours. Like I said, you don't necessarily have to hit the aircraft to scare them and make them reevaluate their situation. Here it comes, he's coming straight towards me now. You'd think this would be a good shot, but trying to get the lead on is even more complicated than you'd think. The last two air kills, I basically got lucky. I just fired in the general direction. And... But then that's the idea. Tracking the target is not as easy as setting the guns in front of them and wait, firing and waiting for them to fly into the shot, which is what I'm trying to do here. A little bit higher. No, nope. change direction. Keep firing. Come on, a little bit higher. There we go. <laughs> That's a 109 dealt with. So the game is going to come to a close here, and we'll go to we'll go to the uh, results. See what we got out of this game. It wasn't a brilliant game in terms of XP and credits, but nevertheless, I think shooting down three aircraft was definitely of good aid to my team. So I'll see you in the results screen. Okay, so let's see how we did. Uh, come on, hurry up. Here we go. So I got 8th place on the team, 1600 experience, 13,000 credits. Not great, but thank you very much for watching. I hope you guys enjoyed the video.